Welcome to Open at PSU. This website was developed by the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences as a repository for all of our OER resources. When we first began this project, we had several goals. Our goals for the content included, um, number one, making our courses searchable and findable. Two, making it so that our audience is able to download our open materials to a local computer. And three, providing a way for our audience to repurpose or reuse the materials. Our goals for the site in general were to make the site inviting and engaging, to make it really a place that people wanted to come and explore and s return to, and also to automate it as much as possible to keep this um, from being an overwhelming endeavor. Okay, so now for the tour. As you can see, we're here on the home page. At the top of the page here, we have a showcase of some of our courses, followed by a short description of our site and OER. Then we have some marketing pieces here. The first is mentioned that the College of EMS has been doing OER for 10 plus years, something that we're really, really proud of. And we're excited to host this new website that makes our materials even more open. <coughs> this is followed by some articles and a message by our dean. And finally, a link to the World Campus so that people are able to come and um, take our courses for credit if that's something that they're interested in. We finished the page with some statistics. You'll see here we have 79 entire courses online. 77 faculty members have been involved in this project. Well over 1,000 topics are explored and 17 programs are represented. These numbers are automatically generated from our database. Okay, so now let's move on to the meat of this site, which is our courses. Like I said, the first thing we were concerned about is making the material findable and searchable. People can find our content in one of two ways. They can start here with the courses tab, and then you'll see that they can just scroll through here and browse through all of the various 79 courses. Another way is to search here using the search box. These two search features are the same. So let's type in climate. Now you'll see we've narrowed the results from 79 to 39. We can limit this even further using the topics on the left. So we can do energy, let's say. We'll narrow this down to 10 results. So let's do a quick aside. These topics or keywords were created by our faculty with the help of a script. The script allowed us to scrape the course for important words um, and things that the, the computer thought were um, essential words in the course. Once this list was generated, we asked the course, course authors to narrow that long list down to a list of 20 to 30 keywords. These keywords are stored in our database and are automatically generated on this page and used to search and sort courses by relevance. Okay, so I did my search here. I'm gonna choose energy policy. I'm gonna click here and you'll see a course description. This is something that the author wrote in most cases and is also stored in our database. So it's something that can be repurposed in multiple places throughout the website and is automatically generated. You can also see that there are links to the various programs that this course is a part of. This is something that the faculty asked us to provide and so you'll see here, if I click here, this is going to take us to the home page for the Energy and Sustainability Policy Program. Again here, Energy and Business and Finance minor does not have a program office, so it takes you directly to the World Campus site that talks about that program. Now moving down the page, you'll see a link here to review the entire course online. We'll do that really quickly and show you what that looks like. So now you can see the entire course. So somebody, before they decide if they want to download this material, can really peruse the site in its entirety. You'll see a download course files that we'll come back to. Next, you see a list of all the keywords that are associated with this course. If you click on one of these keywords, 
it will take you to a list of all of the courses that have those keywords associated with that course. All right, course programs again. Um, we can click on here. This is the Bachelor's of Arts in Energy and Sustainability Policy. It takes you here. There's some links to the actual course program offices that we saw before, as well as a list of all of the courses that are open that are affiliated with that program. And then a similar thing for the course department. So that takes you to a page um, that has a list of all of the courses that are affiliated with that department. Okay, so that's the long way to say that our course is searchable and findable, or our content is searchable. Now let's move on to downloadable. Oh, I did want to, ex excuse me, I did want to mention the authors tab. So here's the author. I can choose to read more. Now you'll see I have an image and a biography. Again, the biography was written and is stored in our database and automatically generated on this page and any other page where um, this instructor is mentioned. It also shows a list of all of the courses that this particular, that Brandy um, has authored, followed by all the programs, etc. So this is a great way if somebody really loves um, one of the courses. So let's say she, the, this, the audience member loves the energy policy course and it's like, what else has this author written? This is a great way for them to find that information. Okay, now we're going to move on to how to download the information. So you'll see here, download course files. So somebody can just click here and download. Now, when they do this, you get a questionnaire. We're very clear at the top that we're not going to spam them. We're just going to use this information to gather some analytics and to reach out to them and see, uh, you know, down the road, maybe a few months, to see if they actually used the materials, how they used it, if they repurposed it or created a new lesson um, using some of our materials. We're going to ask to have an access to that as part of the Creative Commons license, so that we have a repository of how our information is being used. Okay, so here I am going to fill this out me just a moment. My email, I'm an administrator, actually I'm not. Let's say I'm an independent learner, I'm not a robot. And I'm going to submit the questionnaire. Once the, the form is submitted, the zip file is automatically downloaded right here. And the page has a number of interesting things. First of all, it has a list here of other courses that you might be interested in. So similar to Amazon, um, other things that you might want to check out. That's automatically generated using the keywords in our database. It also has this link to download instructions. This list of instructions tells you how to open the zip file and find the relevant information. It talks about how you can cite our information here. And it also, oh, so that's that. So now we've talked about how this website makes our information findable and downloadable. So now that we have downloaded our material, we can, I've opened the zip file and you can see it here. Going to open it. And you'll see that the, the the entire course is there in that zip file. It's located on their local um, desktop and available and ready for them to reuse and repurpose in whatever way they see fit. So um, again, people all over the world that might not have access to um, really great Wi-Fi can use this material right there on their local computer. So let me pull the website back up again. And I'm going to go right back up to the main menu one more time. Back to our home page, our list of courses. We do have an about page. This has information on the purpose of the site, who created the content, how to use it, and how to cite it, and how to get started. The terms of use 
page does exactly that. It explains our terms of use. It explains the basic Creative Commons license and then provides options for how to cite our materials. Our How to Help page asks people to spread the word via social media and other outlets. It asks users to share back. So if somebody's used this material to create um, a lesson maybe for a high school class or for a community college class or for, uh, who knows, a university class um, somewhere in Africa, but they've used portions of our material, we ask them to share that back with us. There's also an opportunity to contribute financially and a request or an opportunity for Penn State faculty and staff to participate in our OER website and endeavor by contributing their materials. Finally, we have the contact form. And um, I think that's it. I hope that you have um, enjoyed this tour. Thank you.